Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Jason, my guy behind the camera is Trenton, and this is the Diamond Knife Company. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Glad you're here. If you're a first time viewer, thanks for stopping by. If you're a previous viewer or subscriber, we really appreciate your support. So today's episode is gonna be a good one. It's all about Gerber knives. We got a bunch of them on the table, so let's check them out. All right, guys, we got a bunch to go through, so I'm gonna give you just a general overview of each of these knives uh, to keep the episode shorter so I don't lose any of you along the way. I will leave um, each of the models listed below as I'm showing you the knives so that if something jumps out at you and you really want to get the fine details, um, you can jump over to Gerber Gear and um, check out whichever model you think might be right for you. So I'm going to just start here at the front and start going through these. The first one here, this one is called the Prybrid um, and it's a it's essentially a utility type tool. Um, it does have the utility razor that you would use in a standard utility knife. There, let's change that out. Um, it's got G10 scales on it and then a decent um, slab. You can see that slab of steel through there. Um, when it's closed, You've got this area here in the front right there where the blade is exposed so you could use that to cut cordage or strip wires or what have you. Um, and then you down here you have the actual pry bar um, area. Um, you can see that you could get up some smaller nails. You could use these for both of these for prying maybe even as a screwdriver. And then you do have the bottle opener um, right here. So. Um, cool tool there, um, very well built and very, very stout. It, it seems like you could definitely put this thing to work. So this one is called the Prybrid, and we do offer that one in gray as well. This next one is the Chonk. We have this one in two different uh, variations. This one you can see has kind of a like black and um, um, like white swirl type almost like a Damascus type of scale on there. And then I believe and that's gonna be a G10 scale. And then you can see here's the back portion, does have the pocket clip, which is a deep carry, which will be a deep carry pocket clip there. Um, and it's, uh, it's only, it, you're only able to carry it that one way, which I guess would make sense seeing how this is upswept so obviously you wouldn't want to put it in your pocket that way that would be pretty uncomfortable that digging into your leg um, but kind of along the lines uh, of the of the pry braid you have the pry area here a little bit larger uh, opening here um, and then possibly easier to to do some uh, screwdriver using these tips as a screwdriver and then also you do have the bottle opener right there as well and then the other version that we that we have to offer is this one with a green g10 scale see that there and then um, you can see that there's some some texture there on the actual tool itself which is really cool i actually prefer this model over the other one super cool all the tools are the same um, but you can see that it has a, a darker pocket clip that matches more with the actual material of the tool. And then uh, this next one we'll look at is going to be the Pledge. This one's going to be a liner lock. So you can see that right there. Liner lock, G10 scales. Um, and then this one is looks like it's going to have a reversible pocket clip so you can carry it left or right it's not deep carry you can see that right there it's it's pretty far down but it um, the screws are on 
Usually you've got the wrap around pocket clip. This one doesn't have that. It sits flat out here towards the end, which is gonna push the pocket clip further down. Um, and no lanyard hole uh, on this one. So if you like using a lanyard on it, not gonna be able to do that. You might be able to grab, put something in here on um, the butt of the knife there, or you could also do like what I like to do with these lanyards that I make and that's um, just uh, slide one on to the pocket clip and that usually works out really well. So you could do something like that um, on there. Um, super cool design though. It's very sleek and, and thin, but still it's got enough width, got enough width on the handle that it feels good in the hand. Um, I like the blade um, shape on this one. It's got this thumb disc type of uh, opening that you could use to open the blade. Um, I don't know if it's reversible, but you can see that the hardware is there. It's possible that you could put that to the other side. I'm not sure, um, but that's going to be your, for your blade deployment there. You can just see that there. You can kind of just roll that with your thumb there. Um, so super cool, super cool design. I really like this one. Like I said, it's lightweight. And um, if, if this one looks like it's going to be one for you, like I said, I'll leave everything linked below and you can go and check that one out over at Gerber Gear. The next one that we're going to have is going to be another liner lock. And this one is the Fuse. And this one does have the dual thumb studs for deployment. Both there on both sides. Um, you can see that it like I said, it is a liner lock, so that's where it's going to actually mount up there. This is a much thinner knife. You can see that, how thin that is right there. So, and, and it's a, probably about the same weight, um, but uh, definitely thinner. So this, this would really disappear in your pocket. Um, this one is only going to be uh, right hand carry and tip up carry. You can see the pocket clip is right here. It is a deep carry pocket clip, but you're only going to get it on that one side. And that's it because you've got um, this insert here on the other side. And I really like what uh, Gerber's doing with their pivots. They've got, you know, they're incorporating designs into them. So they're just not your standard boring, just round uh, type of pivot. So that's, that's super cool. Like the uh, shape on this blade as well. Um, kind of like that drop point there. It's got some good belly on the blade as well. So really like, overall, really like this knife as well. And then you'll see that all of these knives on the table um, have green handles. And that's, that's just because I have to order everything um, for our store. And in the process of doing that, when I look at the shopping cart at the end of putting everything in there, what do I see? Nothing but knives that I like, which are green handled knives. So hopefully all of you like the green handled knives as well. Um, this next one is going to be the Slim Sada. And then we're going to get into these are going to be uh, frame locks. And I really, really like this knife. Um, I'm on the fence about whether or not one of these is going to go into my personal collection and I'm leaning towards that it probably is going to. Um, thin micarta uh, scale on this one and then it's got a small back spacer here and the barrel standoffs and I really like the color of that anodized. It's almost like a maroon purplish type color. So super cool. And then on the back here, it's got the over travel um, right here with the, the insert that matches the scale on the front, which is super nice. I like how that gives kind of breaks up the aesthetic of the back where it's not just all one piece of, of uh, you know, one slab of metal there. And I do like that the pocket clip um, has a different um, look to it versus the metal for the frame lock. So that just really, I think that all complements each other. Super thin carry. I mean, you can see this thing is way thin. So that would really be nice. Really be nice in your pocket. Um, open construction. I like, the, uh, I like the shape on this blade as well. And I like the hole right here uh, for the deployment. Um, works really well to reverse flick. 
So you just get your finger in there and then flick that open. Works really, really well. So this one is the Slim Sada. Um, and, and this is one of my, this is definitely one of my favorites on the table. Now the next one we're gonna look at is gonna be another frame lock. And this one, I think, I believe it's called the uh, Yako. And uh, well, let me show you this before I actually open it. It's gonna be a front flipper, but it's, I guess until it gets broken in, it's pretty firm. Uh, so I don't know that it's, it's, I've tried it a few times. I'm not very good at, at front flicking anyways, so maybe that's part of it as well. But this is how you're gonna open the knife. And um, I, I'm just, I've just been using my thumb and just kind of rolling it over like that. Um, but it is a frame lock, so you can see that there. Now, I believe this is the only one on the table that is a tip down only, and it's for right hand carry only as well. There's no other place to put the pocket clip. And uh, if you were going to want to possibly lighten up the tension on the knife, on the pivot, uh, here you would have to remove this clip to get to the pivot to potentially loosen it up a little bit. But uh, even, even with that being said, I like the aesthetic of the knife. I like this anodized color on the uh, front scale here. Uh, again, open design. It's got a single uh, barrel standoff back there. So you can see that back there towards the end of the knife. Got a couple of them right there. Um, and then as far as putting a lanyard, I don't know that you'd be able to do that. We'd have to look into the... Now it does have this hole here that I thought, well, you'd be able to utilize that to open it. But unfortunately, um, when you close the knife, you just don't have enough access to that part of the knife. It's just you can't get anything, can't get anything in there to open it. But it looks like back here, if I can get you a shot of that, let me see how I can orient this so that you can actually see it. Um, you can see where those barrel standoffs are and you might be able to get a might be able to get a lanyard if you like having lanyards on your knife. You might be able to get one around the, this upper one here. And it might not come in contact with the blade uh, inside. You just have to have it uh, pretty close, pretty tie your knots pretty close. But um, yeah, aesthetically, I really like the style of this knife. Um, a little bit heavier though, I will say. This one's gonna be a little bit heavier. Not gonna really take up too much room in your pocket, but uh, does have some, some more weight than the other ones that we've already looked at. Uh, and as far as this next one, this is the flat iron. Um, again, this is gonna be a, a liner, uh, not a liner lock, this is gonna be a frame lock, frame lock like the other two that we've already looked at. Um, but the back here, it's got all, it's kind of all metal. It doesn't really have any of the different types of materials that are going to give any contrast on the back. And because of that, um, and also with the actual blade stock, this knife is on the heavier side, but I will say it is ground. You can see that pretty thin towards the edge. So this should be a really good slicer. Um, but it does have some weight. With that being said though, um, it feels very, very stout. Like you could, you could definitely put this knife to work. Um, it's got some heft to it and uh, it does have, the, does have the fidget factor to it. I like uh, being able to, um, to reverse flick it like that and it, it, the action on it is really good. Um, the only other thing to kind of keep in mind with this one is, is that um, I don't know how well um, this pocket clip, I haven't carried this one yet, but um, it is a shorter, you can see that it is a shorter pocket clip. So um, I don't know how well that would work in the pocket, um, but uh, it might be all right, but you're only gonna be able to carry it um, right hand and tip up. So that's all you're gonna get with this one there. But other than that, um, it is a, a you know open design like most of the ones we've been looking at. 
Um, you can see all the barrel standoffs there. Um, again, with this one, there's no lanyard hole, and I don't think that you'd really be able to get one back here around that without interfering with the blade. So um, something to keep in mind if you like lanyards on your knives, and I, pr I primarily do have a lanyard on all my knives, so that might be a deal breaker for me or for some of you. Um, this next one is going to be another frame lock, and this one is the Asada. Um, I really like this knife as well. Um, it's a little bit thinner and a little bit lighter than the flat iron, but um, does have different uh, material here. So the other one was aluminum. This is going to have a thin uh, slab of this polished uh, micarta. And you can see, get a picture of that. See, it's kind of got a, just a real thin liner uh, or a scale um, on that liner on that one side there. And then like the other one, it does have different materials or colors for the pocket clip and the over travel stop. So that's nice. It makes some, gives you some contrast there and it looks really nice on the back. Um, pocket clip, a wider pocket clip, but longer than the flat iron. Um, and uh, they do give you a hole here where you could tie a lanyard onto there if you wanted to. And so that's nice. But again, same thing with this, it's not reversible. It's not really deep carry. I mean, it's all right, but uh, you can see how far back it's gonna be from the edge, from the butt of the knife. Uh, but uh, still should carry okay. I'm um, thinking with a longer pocket clip, it would probably be nice. Um, pretty thick blade stock as well on this one see that but it is the same type of grind so you can see it does go down to a pretty good point there so should have some really good slicing on this one as well and i like on both of these that they do have that forward choil so you can get your whole hand on there and really get really get a grip on that with your thumb up here you could again with this knife and like the flat iron you could really put this knife to work you could really do some heavy pushing through some materials, whether it's hard cardboard. I mean, if it, you're carrying it, you're in, a, in the office or, you know, in the shop, I'm sure that you could do some, some good, get through some tougher tasks with a, a knife like this. Um, and then the next one that we have, we'll kind of switch up the pace here and, and uh, we're going to look, this one is a, this one's called the straight lace and this one is a slip joint so it does have the half stop there so you can see that there and then there's the full stop there so I'll give you a shot of the, the full knife really nice very um, I think more of a gents knife a gents carry and uh, it's got that polished blade I like how it has that nail nick that goes across the whole uh, top of the blade there, the polished bolster, um, that, that, that top is completely uh, on here on the back. It's all completely polished as well. Um, now this one uh, does have a pocket clip on it. It's kind of a smaller pocket clip again. Um, however, this one will give you reversible. So you can carry left or right, um, only tip up carry though. And the other uh, neat thing about this, which you don't normally get, is you've got a lanyard hole right here. So you could add a lanyard to this. So that's a nice, nice addition to this, uh, this model. And then there's your half stop and then your full close. And this next one we're gonna look at is the highbrow. Now this one is gonna be, a, it's an assisted open knife. Um, but it does have the crossbar lock on it. And it does also have this additional lock mechanism up here on the top that will actually allow you to lock it since it is an auto so that it won't fire in your pocket. For some reason you were to hit that or what have you, you have that lock forward. It's not gonna deploy until you actually pull the lock back. Then once you do that, you just use the flipper tab and then that flies open. Um, and then you would use, obviously, you would use the crossbar lock to pull back and then to actually close the knife. 
So nice, des nice design on this one. It's got the aluminum um, scales and it's got a different texture where this is more of a smooth, which gives the appearance that it would be polished. And this is more of, a, it's got a little bit of a texture on it. Very, very minimal, but it does have some texture on it. Um, so it looks like it's two different scales, but it's actually just the same piece. And then you have your uh, backspacer there that runs from that lock all the way back to the butt of the knife. You do get a, um, a reversible pocket clip. So you could carry this one. You can see that you would be able to mount it right here if you wanted to carry a uh, left hand. And then you also do get um, right here, you also do get a lanyard hole right there, which is pretty generous too. You could put, uh, you know, definitely have no problem putting a lanyard on there. The pocket clip again um, is not gonna be very deep carry. You can see how far down that's gonna be. So you'll have you know a little bit of the knife hanging out of your pocket there, but just that portion right there. But uh, and then there's the inner inner look at the knife there. You can see where that locking mechanism is right uh, right here under the underneath. But overall, nice de nice design and and um, definitely have a thicker, more filling. Um, grip on the knife because of the thickness of the the scales and it has a decent uh blade stock on it as well it's not it's not as big as the flat iron or the asada but it's still pretty decent pretty decent uh blade stock and then it has you know that shallower grind here on the blade as well so that's definitely going to give you some more strength in the blade so this this might be another knife that's going to be able to do some serious work now the next one is going to be just a straight up crossbar lock knife and that's going to be the assert now the one thing about this knife i will say when i purchased it and and uh, this is one of uh, gerber's newer releases i thought this knife was going to be quite a bit bigger than it actually is um, for me it's it's pretty it's about at the limit of where where i want my knife to be as far as like how big it is because you can see that if I put the handle, it just just barely, I mean, you can see it just barely fits in my hand. So that pinky is doesn't really have a lot of lot to grab on. Um, and it's very, very thin as well. Um, you can see this here, very thin and very, very light. These scales are super, super light. Um, so not a very big knife this way is also so this knife for sure would just really disappear in your pocket because it's super light and it's not very it's not very big it's not very wide and it's very very thin now this knife will give you it does have the the deep carry pocket clip on it and it is reversible and with the crossbar lock this would be a great knife for uh, left hand or right hand carry um, and then also on the blade, another nice thing about this knife, another option that you have is, is with the thumb studs here, you can adjust it to where you would like that to be so that when you're using those to deploy the blade, um, you can get it in a spot where it makes sense for your thumb. Like for me, I would really need to push it up further because it's so short. I, I'm, I'm really having to reach far back on the blade like this, but if I could get it further up there, it would be a little more, it'd be a little more comfortable for me. I'm really having a to bring my thumb back um, to try to get to it. I'd rather be further up here. So you do have the option of doing that with this knife. But overall, uh, really nice design, really nice uh, knife, generous lanyard hole right there. Um, so you could definitely put a lanyard in there. And nice and design on the pocket clip as well because um, it kind of breaks it up. You know, you've got that little slit in there that just really makes it look nice i hope they do make another release in the future and they make like an extra large like a large model of this knife that'd be really great i'd be i'd be all about that one and then the last one we're going to look at here is going to be the propel i will say the assert and the propel these last two are american made uh, knives and before i go to the next one i'll show you guys here that um it's american made and it does have the uh s30v 
uh, blade material. I don't know if, I, if I'm getting a good enough shot for that. There we go, S30V blade material. Um, so higher end knives, uh, obviously they come with a higher price point, but um, definitely quality materials. Now this next one, you can see that I already have a lanyard on it because this one is not gonna make it to uh, our store. It's not gonna end up on our shelves. Um, we'll definitely have to order more of these because um, I, just, I just love this knife. Uh, it's an auto and it's just a real solid, solid feeling knife. Everything about it, the locking mechanism, the push button, the way the blade comes out with that auto feature, the backspacer here, this thick backspacer that runs the whole length of this all the way out and then is exposed at the end there. If I can move the lanyard out of the way. But you can see that that comes all the way out and uh, you could definitely, I mean, you could definitely beat on something or if, you know, use it as a glass breaker or whatever, hammer something if you needed to. It's very, very stout. Um, and then you can see inside here, there's the actual locking mechanism for the button. So it's right in there. See if you can, I don't know if you can actually see that when I'm actuating. Yeah, you can get a look at that, how it plunges down. There's a round cutout in the blade and that's where that'll grab the blade when it releases the blade under the spring pressure and slings out. Um, does have the lock right there. And then when you slide it back, actually you get the red and obviously means it's ready to fire. Um, and then this knife is a uh, re reverse carry. So it does have the pocket clip. Again, not a very deep carry pocket clip, um, but I've, I've been carrying this one and it doesn't bother me at all. I really, really like this knife. Um, you can carry, um, so right hand carry, on this knife, you could carry the way it is with tip up, or you could move it to tip down if you wanted to. But if you want to carry it left hand, you're only going to be able to carry tip up, which you'd move it right here. Because of the pivot and the button and all that, you don't get the option of carrying tip down. But for me, that's, that's not a deal breaker at all because I don't carry any of my knives uh, tip down. I carry them all tip up. So yeah, this is just a great overall knife. Just thick slabs of G10. The texture on here is really awesome. And um, I just, out of all of these, this is the one that really spoke to me. So if any of these look, uh, look like they might be something you'd like to have in your collection, like I said, we'll put the link underneath for each of these knives. You guys can go and check those out and uh, Hopefully we've shown you something that you like. Well, I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys back out around and uh, I'll give you my final thoughts on all these knives. All right, guys, as I mentioned before, I hope that we showed you something that you really liked. Um, we'll leave those links for you to jump over to the Gerber gear, check out uh, any of those models that you think are right for you. And then also, before we get out of here, I did want to mention you still have time to get registered to win our giveaway. Um, we're going to be giving away two Kubi knives and a Kubi case. If you haven't seen our first video, Dismantling Kubi Knives, um, we'll leave a link. We'll leave a link up here for you guys. You can jump over and check that video out and all of the, of the instructions for the registration. Um, you can find them in the description of that video. So if you're watching this video and it's before August 31st of 2023, then you still have time to get over there and get registered. Um, I hope that you guys hung around to the end of the video. If you did, really appreciate that. Um, also, you can see here on the uh, table here, we've got a bunch of other blades that weren't in the video today. Um, just a little prelude to our next video, which is going to be knives that are going into my personal collection. So be on the lookout for that. Um, that's all we've got for you today. So you know the deal, guys. Uh, until the next episode, be sure to keep those tips up.